Hi, this is Daryl Webster with a refresh of a quick tip I recorded in 2013. I had a question uh, as a follow-up on that on that recording, and I just wanted to help answer it in the context of all the changes that we've had uh, with Office 365, or particularly the relevant ones around archive, mailbox size, and um, some additional features we have in Outlook. Um, so uh, the idea really is to try and use this Exchange Online Archive. We have it as part of a, an E1 plan and part of an E3, E5 plan. Uh, the E1 plan gets a um, partition, an in-place archive of, um, of your existing mailbox. So let's say you've got 50 gigs worth of mail, a uh, 50 gig mailbox, um, that if you're wanting to activate the in-place archive, it's going to partition it. And then any email that you're archiving to that in-place archive is going to be part of that 50 gigs that you have allocated as your total mailbox storage. However, the E3, E5 plans have a uh, unlimited archive. Does start off at a certain size. I believe it's 50 gig now as it's described in the service description. And they are rolling out this um, expanding, um, auto expanding or auto addition um, to that storage so that it's an unlimited archive and continues to, to uh, add on space. However, in uh, recent news, we are now seen a 100 gigabyte mailbox for the E3 and E5. Um, wowzers, uh, you really do want to keep that nice and trim because, um, you know, imagine uh, trying to recache an OST file that's 75 gigs. Um, or, or even um, for those of us like myself who are not great at uh, maintaining uh, and clearing out, getting down to inbox zero, um, if you've got too many items in your, your main inbox folder, then um, that's going to uh, affect performance for um, uh, viewing those emails. So I want to refresh that tip that I tried to share um, back in 2013 about how to easily archive your mail to your in-place archive or your uh, Exchange Online archive. And uh, to do that, we're going to use a quick step within Outlook. Now, um, before I go into that, I do want to just pass comment about a feature that's been there for a little while now, which is when we re, uh, right-click on an item, we do have this feature called Archive. Um, and that does suggest that you're able to um, push that item to the online archive. However, it is just a folder within your uh, your mailbox. So if we just go down to um, mailbox here, it's created a folder called archive, and it's really just a way of taking that email out of your inbox and putting it somewhere else. Um, kind of a cheats archive, really. It's not truly an archive. It's, it's more of a, let's just get that stuff out of the way and deal with it later. Um, although it would add it as a better step than just filing it into the deleted items and leaving it there. So what I'm going to show you is a, a, a way of really getting that content into the Exchange Online Archive uh, rather than off to an archive folder. Um, so we've got a demo folder here and we're going to create a quick step. Uh, now up in the uh, quick steps area, we'll click the button to get to that full, um, full way of creating rules. We'll create a new rule and move to folder. Now I'm going to change the name of that, move to online archive. And uh, we'll choose our folder and we'll get on down to our online archive and choose the inbox so easily chosen the destination and now we'll just change a couple of other options I do want to mark the item as red as well because uh, there might be some that are obvious to me that yeah I want to keep it but I don't necessarily want to read it I've got to have it there uh, because it involves my name or I've been CC'd on something and I want it there for reference so I do want to mark it as read and archive it. Um, now, just a couple of other things that I'll do. I will assign a shortcut. Now, one thing about this, um, I'm, I like to use the control and shift keys on my left-hand side. And um, if I need to alternate between numbers, then it's my right-hand side. So I'm going to choose something at the um, higher end of the scale, control shift nine, so that I can, with my right hand, control shift and nine, and then I can um, activate this quick step. Um, I will drop it in a quick tip because um, you know that's good to be able to remind myself what that's for, um, or you know if I'm creating this for someone else to remind them what this quick tip is for. So we'll uh, move the item to the online archive, and we'll set that. Right, so we have a quick tip, 
and now it is as simple as control shift and nine and that's going to uh, spin the blue donut for a little while and then push it off to the online archive and we'll just have a quick look at where that has landed go on down to online archive into the inbox and now with the online archive of course it is a um, it is not caching it down to my machine and it has to go off and um, access that so it is now going and and finding that item so you will find a small delay as you go to access it and have a look at that content but there it is there's the item that I've archived now the question that was asked on my 2013 post was um, Daryl you you talked about being able to do this for multiple items but you didn't really show us in the video so what we can do is um, this is really an old trick that you can use for a lot of different Microsoft um, programs is um, holding down the, the shift key um, I have something selected already and as I hold down the shift key and left click uh, the last message in the list then um, I can or, or the uh, second to last message it will select everything uh, within that range um, now another way to do this if I hold down the control key and um, left click just a few messages that I'm wanting to choose you see that it's um, selecting just those messages so these are just a couple of tips that um, I've you know, picked up from working with Windows and Microsoft for a number of years. And that's how I would um, I'll, you know, archive just uh, a bulk number of items or, or selected items as I see them in the list. Now just to demonstrate that fully, let's use the shift left click to do it for the whole range of, of messages there. This time I'm going to launch the, the quick step from the toolbar. Uh, it's a move to online archive. You'll see that there's my my uh, uh, tooltip as well. It says we'll move the item to the online archive. Um, funny that, kind of says that in the rule. But anyway, uh, we'll click that. Uh, let the blue donut do its thing. Um, and it will push the content down to the online archive. So we'll go and confirm that that is there. Um, and that will, there we go. Not sure why it did that for five messages. Uh, guess it was a big job pushing that down there but um, here we go inbox and you should see the online archive with those five messages that I have uh, archived so there you go you can do it for one item multiple items um, now what I would like to see is um, that if you do have the online archive enabled that um, this uh, right click uh, will become the uh, a way of assigning that to push that to the archive um, but for now, you have a lot more control if you're using that quick step um, capability. Um, so you can see, you can launch it from a right click uh, and quick step and pick out your quick step. You can use the um, shortcut key that we assigned or um, you can use the toolbar at the top there as well. So hopefully that refresh of the, tool, the, of the tip has helped um, and it'll help you to make use of that online archive. Um, there's no real excuse to... Um, to uh, push those items and archive them into deleted items. Um, now, if you're used to doing that with the delete key, um, then uh, you can at least uh, now use a, uh, a tooltip as well, or rather a, a quick step um, shortcut key. Now, there is uh, one other thing I'd like to show you too, and it's, uh, it's something that I've been using. Um, it is a, a mouse that allows me to assign different things uh, such as shortcuts to to this um, uh, to to being able to archive things. Uh, now this is a, a Logitech X MX Master, and what I have done is uh, been able to assign that shortcut uh, to a mouse gesture. Um, what this mouse allows me to do is that I push down on uh, a button here, just where my thumb is, and I can gesture up, down, left, or right. Um, and I can assign different shortcuts to that. In fact, I can assign a shortcut to it which is specific to the Outlook application. So let's just quickly uh, open that up. Now it was called uh, Logitech Options. And I might have to drag this on over to, yep, I'll drag that on over to the screen here. So there's our Logitech um, MX Master. Um, I can uh, assign certain shortcuts to applications so this one's going to just apply to the Microsoft Outlook one um, we'll go into here we'll choose to assign a shortcut with a gesture 
So I've used the custom gestures. So there are a number of different templated ones, um, but here I've got a, a, a keystroke, which is Control, Shift, and Nine, which I have assigned. And now when I want to archive an item, then I can uh, push that button uh, with my thumb and gesture by going to the, the left and it will archive that item. So quite a, a handy um, function of this mouse. And just to show or illustrate that in action, uh, we'll find another worthy item. Um, let's just uh, left and as I've pushed that button down and I've swiped to the left, then um, that item's now gonna be pushed into the online archive. And away it goes. Uh, I'm not sure why it has to pop up a little um, item there to say it's doing that, but great, it's done. So we have uh, a couple of ways to get that content into the online archive. And um, you know, if you're interested in looking at a, a mouse that's more fully featured, um, then that can uh, allow you to do that too. Uh, thanks for watching this refresh of the tooltip. I hope it's been helpful and uh, hopefully it can help you get back down to inbox zero, the constant battle. See ya.